Good morning, everybody. I invite you all to get on your feet with us. And like every other service, we're going to start the service with some prayers. If you guys want to close your eyes, bow your heads. Thank you, Lord, for another day, God. Thank you for all that you've done for us, Lord. And thank you for the breath that we have in our lungs this morning. And I thank you that we get to come to your house and we get to spend some time with you, Lord. Lord, I ask that during this service, Lord, you would teach us, remind us of who you are, that you would receive our praise and worship to you, Lord. I pray for everyone that is here, Lord, and all of our church members that went out of town on vacation or wherever they may be, Lord, that you would bless them and protect them, God. Yes, that you would allow us to have a good service and speak to the pastor this morning, open our ears to hear from you, open our hearts to receive from you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.
The atmosphere is changing now For the Spirit of the Lord is here The evidence is all around That the Spirit of the Lord is here
God is good. All the time. Oh, I caught your sleep. I said, God is good. All the time. Yes, He is. In spite of whatever happens in our lives, God's in control of all things. Yes, yes, yes. We stop and look for a moment, and when things aren't going our way, we feel like, God, where are you? He says, I'm not here. I'm closer than the air that you breathe. You're looking too far away. I'm closer than the air that you breathe. Amen. We embrace that. We go with that and understand that. As we go to life, our life is surrounded by people that make promises. I've always shared before, and I'll share it again today as a premise of my messages. One of my things my dad taught me, taught me many things. But he taught me the following thing. He says, a man is only as good as his word. If you promise something, promise knowing that you're going to do it. Don't do things. Don't promise things out of emotion. Don't promise things that you can't comply with. Don't promise things that you hope you could do promise things that you will do and can do. Because a lot of people depend on you. And as good as your word is, you know, we all have people. How many have people promise a lot of things to you? Yes. Yes. How many have people promise a lot of things and not comply? Yes. How many have some, something like that? Yeah. Yes. How many promise them to know this? I go that. But the thing is this, that life is surrounded by promises, hopes, and expectations. 
Remember when we were little kids, and that day, some of us had to go a long way to go there. But I remember one of the things that they would tell us when we first got to school. If you get an A, I will give you a dime for every A. And guy, I'm talking about my time. That was a lot of money back then. A dime was a dime. Right? And then you got home a bunch of A's, and all of a sudden it went from a dime to a nickel. There's too many of them. How is this made? And as you go and you go through life and promises made, you be offered that mom first of all. Promises made, and they're all tied to one thing, obedience. If you obey, if you comply, then I'll reward you. You tell the kid, if you behave, you do your homework, you obey, then you can borrow the car on Friday. Conditions, promises we made, we're always a condition because every promise has its condition. If the condition is met, then we get rewarded. As we go on our Christian walk, people, the word of God is filled with God's promise. I understand that. And if God said it, God will do it. However, there comes a however. God's promises has conditions. When you meet the condition, God will meet your need. See, a lot of people, when the world turns upside down, we're good about quoting scripture, what your word says, and you promise this, and this scripture is this. I mean, we start throwing scripture all over the place. Pastor said this and said that and the other. My mom, the very religious, told me this and that. We grab things out of context because we forget that before we can receive the promise, we've got to know the promise keeper, the one that makes the promise. We need to have in contact with him. We can't secondhand anything in our Christian walk. It's a direct relationship by the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We've been talking about a total commitment, what is important. Not about only coming to church, but being committed in every aspect of the Christian walk. To understand, to embrace the promise of God and to fulfill your mission into a church and to a ministry. To understand you can't love God until you love the work you're involved in. If you're involved with the Lord Jesus Christ is. Now let me go one step further. How many have already been blessed in your life? How many know sometimes you've been blessed even you don't deserve it? Amen. And God's been merciful and understanding. So let's go to speak about total commitment. Because your relationship and my relationship with God is a love affair. People, you don't come to church because you're afraid to go to hell. Understand that. If that's your reason, you're going to hell anyway. You missed the whole point. Because everything has to do with God, and you and I in a relationship with God has to do with love. Jesus didn't come to condemn anybody. He came to save us all. Amen. God does not condemn us. We condemn ourselves. Bottom line, we need to understand that. So when we look at the promises of God, God's promises has conditions. It has a time frame involved in it. So we talk about total commitment, given all of who I am, my effort, my abilities, my time, my talents, that my, the name of the Lord might be glorified in my person, that people might see Jesus Christ through me, through my actions. Not because I'm holy, not because I'm perfect, because I'm loving, understanding, compassionate, and patient. All the things that we can do in life, they really typify the image of Jesus Christ. So we go to life, then we start to talk about total commitment according to 2 Chronicles 7.14. There the Bible is speaking directly to the church, to the believers, what God expects out of each and every one. He says, you're going to do these things, the conditions I'm going to give you in order that you might be blessed. I want to bless you, but I can't bless you unless you meet my conditions. So you see, when we look at St. Chronicles 7, 14, we find that in this place, we speak about what it takes to be totally committed to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's taken quite by part. This scripture in itself has two powerful words. There's two words that really make this thing happen. The first word in this in the scriptures and Chronicles is the word if. We talked about this. The word if used by God is a challenge to you. God, when he speaks to you and he begins with the word if, he's saying if, that means you make the choice. I can bless you. I can prosper you. I can meet your need if you meet the conditions. I said back then when we talked about that, how the if that God uses is you're using your free will. People, we know who we are. We don't need to be very religious to know when we're right and wrong. Morality teaches us that. Our conscience, common sense tells us about stuff like this. When you understand that what God uses the word if, and that's why he starts the scripture about Torah and he's saying, if you want to, I want you. God's side is always, yes, I want to, but he's waiting for your answer, what your answer is going to be. 
When you're, if it's yes, his is totally committed to 100%. He doesn't give you anything halfway. He'll give you everything that you need when you meet all the conditions. Then we talked about all the conditions. He said he wanted, humble yourself and pray and see my face and read from your, from your simple ways. Then we come to the next powerful word in that scripture, and that is then. The word then sits right in the middle. The word then is like the diving board. You can either go forward or backwards. If you choose not to obey, then it means I'm not going to bless you. You made a choice. You decided my way is better. I'm happier this way. I don't need that. I don't need religion. I don't need church. I don't need that. I got this. I'm strong enough to do these things. You're on your own. Do it your way. Do it the highway and you're not going to prosper in life. But when your choice is yes, then it takes you into the agenda what God will do for you. Let me tell you, my brother and sister, for God, there's nothing impossible. Their greatest issues of life you're going to confront. Their greatest disappointments can be fixed. Their greatest issues that come, that come against you can, they can be conquered to the power of Jesus Christ because you made a choice. You said, yes, I accept. Yes, I go forward. Then I will see the, receive the promises of God. But we got to go one step further now. Let's take this scripture and really turn it apart to find out how that then works. The word all the then also has conditions. And because when we go past it, he says, then he says, I will hear from heaven. He speaks about the condition between man and God. We talked about this at one time. The believer says, no longer do I live by Christ lives. Christ lives where? He lives within me. And here he says, I will hear from heaven. What does that mean? In relation to no longer I live, but Christ lives within me. What is he saying? I will hear from heaven. There's a distance. You've gone through all this purification process, but you've got to come back together with God. You've got to get it, put it back together with God. I'm listening now. At least I'm listening now. Now we have fellowship. Now we can communicate. Now we can speak. Now we can get together. But I'm not where I used to be. I'm not the Lord I used to be in your life. I can't bless you like I blessed you in the past. I can't move my hand in your behalf because I'm hearing all the way from heaven. We have to reestablish our fellowship. We have to fix this thing once again because at one time we were okay, but somewhere along the line you strayed away. Somewhere along the line you lost your commitment. Somewhere along the line you said, I don't have to do this. I'm not do that together. And your fellowship with God began to waver. And began, because you began to waver, now listen to me good, God will never walk away from you, but you will walk away from God. Amen. We go and we walk away in such a soul man. We allow life to make us stray through friends, through family, through different things of life. And the tendency of serving God like God should be served go by the wayside. It's no longer important to pray until we seek the face of God. It's no longer important to be where I need to be as far as a believer in Jesus Christ. And you yourself are creating that gap between you and God. Oh, God will listen. Remember, we talked out of the book of Isaiah. It says, see God where he might be fine, found, calling because he is there. He's willing and desiring to have fellowship with you. But you yourself have to understand your condition, your position within God. All you see that here today, watching over Facebook, you know exactly where you stand with God, you know. I don't have to stand here and tell you where you're at. Because we're all the different stages of our Christian walk. There's some people on fire for God. And some people feeling the fire of hell in their lives. Because their life is falling apart. We're all different. We all have, to have diverse needs. But you know what I have in common? A loving, understanding, and patient God. They will listen to you from heaven. They will listen to your cry and listen to your plea. But to remind you, it's been the tendency of mankind to always stray away. When we come to God with great need in our lives, we accept the Lord and Savior. Man, we're ready. We're on fire for God. Everything is great, awesome. As time goes on, we have the tendency to slack off. Slack off. By taking the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse number 20, where God is speaking to the church of Lago saying, and he's talking about who they are. And he speaks and he says, because you're neither hot nor, nor cold. You're lukewarm. I will speak you from my mouth. He's talking to the churches they're established. Talking about the needs of their life. 
what needs to happen in life in order to get their lives together. And then he says, listen to this, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If somebody is knocking at your door, are they inside or outside? Or are they inside or outside? So what's God telling the church allowed to say? I left you. I left you. You're having church. You're being religious. You're going to all the formalities that what religion would teach you, but you kick me out. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And then he takes it very personal. Then he moves from the whole church to the individual because then he says, if any man would open the door, if any one of you, if the church doesn't want to, but if you want to, if you open the door, I will come and sup with you and you with me. We'll get back together again. It's a choice that you have to make. We can sit as a church. We can worship at a church. We can sing together. We can pray for one another as we go to life. But the bottom line, the only one that determines your eternity is going to be you and the fellowship you have with God. Only you know where you stand. Or you know exactly how your walk with the Lord has been lately. Now you understand why you say, God, not Pastor, I pray and God doesn't listen. I pray and I just don't feel him like the Supreme before. Then stop for a moment. Take inventory of where you stand in this presence and this fellowship. Find out if the Lord is Lord over your life. Now, in how many of our lives is God number one in our lives? Stop and think. Is he number one in your life? Because if he's not number one, he's nothing. You understand me? We say, well, you know this, I like this, I like that, and, and my kids and my grandkids and this and the other, they love them, all your kind of stuff. You start putting a lot of people ahead of God. They say, anyway, God understands. God is a jealous God. He will not occupy a second place in your life. He's either the first or he's nothing. So don't be deceived. Don't talk about, well, if I just walk close enough to God, I'm going to be okay. No, the Bible doesn't say walk close enough to God. He says, no longer do I live, but Christ lives within me. It's not how close can I walk, it's how close is he to me within my life, in my relationship, in my fellowship, in my, in my, in my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I determine that. Don't allow anybody or anything in circumstance of life to deceive you as to what God can or cannot do. Faith will move the hand of God. And we need to understand that we need to be in close communication with God. To come to understand that if we have fellowship with God, then all things are possible that we serve a great I am, the great creator. To understand this, then he says, the next thing he says, once you understand this, the first thing I'm going to do for you, here's blessing number one. Listen to where all the blessings start, okay? He says, I will forgive your sins. What does God have to do before he can bless you? Forgive your sins. But we still sit there and say, I got no sins, and you got a problem. How many know you still don't have a sin? How many still don't have a sin? How many know how to lie? Uh, how many lied this week? Because you're like, I not me, Pastor. La sangre de Cristo, Pastor. Don't say that to me. Who's that? It's the guy who tell him I'm out of here. You just what? I'm taking it from something very simple for you to understand something. God is holy, and your body becomes a temple of the Holy Spirit when you go over your life. Now, how many like to live in a clean house? How many like to sleep in a clean bed? That's what God wants out of your life. He wants to clean. And guess who has to do the job? You initiate. Through what? Through repentance. To speak to God. That's how you clean the house. That's how you clean your mind. You talk to God about everything that's wrong. You don't need a course on what's wrong. You know what's wrong. You already know what's wrong. That's the things you need to take to God. As simple as they might be, don't let it get bigger or complicated. Don't let it get so big you can't beat it anymore. Cut it now. 
and don't do like a lot of times we used to do when they send us out when we're young and they send you out to cut the weeds in order to get them quick what you do just cut them off right at the top right you didn't realize the root was still there and then what happened a couple of years later you gotta go back and do it again and do it again and do it again don't cut off your unrighteousness at the top get it from the root and kick it out Amen. remove it through confession remove it to speak to god i know a lot of times when we feel in life we all make it we all make mistakes in life people come on we all make mistakes in life a lot of times we have a friend or someone spiritual we like to talk to that makes us feel better and we hear the word god is merciful god is loving god is that makes us feel good now but it doesn't forgive your sin it just makes you feel good. You don't need to be feel good. You need to be cleansed. We need to be washed. We need to be forgiven. We need to go before God and come to understand that it doesn't matter how you fail Him, He's not going to shut the door. He will not shut the door. God is the case of the prodigal son, where the father always had an open door for the son to come back, regardless of what he did. He left knowing that he was wrong. He left knowing he was stealing from that. He knew all this was going on. God said, okay, go. Let God kick you in the mouth. And then when you already come back home, the door is going to be open. I'm not encouraging you to go out and sin. I'm saying that if that has happened to your life, it's never too late to come back to Jesus. Do not allow the enemy to deceive you and say you're unworthy. Do not allow your actions of life to condemn you when Jesus Christ gave his life that you might have life and not in abundance. You have to reflect take action and take it back to the basic fundamentals of Christianity, Jesus forgive you. Or I must say, confess it, speak to God. Because he said, the first thing I'm gonna do, I cannot do anything else for you until I clean the house. I cannot remove the ingredients of your life until I clean the house. How can I live with you if the house isn't clean? So he said, first thing I'm gonna do, he says, once we do this, and you said yes to me, and then now we are having fellowship, You've invited me to come. The first thing I'm going to do when I come to your house, I come knocking at your door this morning. If you open it and let me in, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to clean this house. We're going to clean it. That your body would be the temple of the Holy Spirit of God and you might be a blessed to people that surround you. That you're not walking on water, you're just walking in the presence of Almighty God. That you seek God's guidance and God's power and God's authority and God's strength to move forward. To understand that what nobody else understands, God is going to understand. If you've been condemned by your thoughts, by your ideas, by the concept, think your life, you're like, there is no tomorrow. The tomorrow is in God's hands. He is a great I am. Loving, merciful, understanding, but you need to go to Him. You can't beat around the bush. You can't ask anybody to do it for you. You need to do it for yourself. There's a lot of people saying, I got my mama praying for me. That's good, your mama praying for you, but you gotta pray for yourself. You're the one that has a need. You're the one that needs a miracle. It said, how many have moms that are really blessing your life? Well, how many have moms, first of all? Yeah, because some don't have that blessing, right? But if you have a mom that was a praying mom, you're blessed. And a praying mom to a rebellious kid is a pain. Oh my God. And you hear her praying, me, oh Lord, bless me, people protect him, and Lord, bring him. And you say, oh, mom, I'm good, I know what I'm doing. No, you don't. But in time, you'll understand what mama meant, what her prayers were. To prepare your life, to be blessed. To open a door that you might walk into, you can speak to God. And understand that the God that your mama serves is your God also. That you're a part of that family where you walk in and say, God, forgive me. I need forgiveness. I need your help. I need your direction. I need you to be in my life. When we do that, then the step that is the process of God's blessing being fulfilled is now in motion. I clean the house. He says, now I will heal your land. Now that you're mine, now that we're family, now that I'm your God, and you're my son, and you're my daughter, what you need. What do you need? What's it to God? What are you going to? What does it touch your life? There's too many people today going through a lot of stress. Like, oh, I can't lose anyone. 
other leaders going through depression. They received a great discipline in their life. Something you thought was going to be there is no longer there. And go like, oh. God said, I don't need you to be down. I don't need you to be destroyed. I need you to be blessed. I want you to understand who I am. He said, because in John 10, 10, I told you, I have come that you might have life and have an abundance. I asked you, are you having an abundant life? I'm not asking if you have money. I'm not asking if you have a bank account or you have a savings account. I'm asking if you have an abundant life. What's abundant life? Peace of mind. Being blessed. Walking by faith. Watching God work. Watching God close doors that you thought were going to be open. He said, God, what's next? I heard a good message this morning about that. But it says, when you're going to life and you've done things for a certain time, a certain long time, and his blessed you all and cut off, it's not that God doesn't care. He's getting you ready for something bigger. And use a case, you know, the message I heard this morning about the Israelites. I was out in the desert and God gave them manna every morning. They had something to eat. Manna, manna, manna. After all those years of manna, they were one little manna. Why? Because God, I surround you with the nuts that you need. Go get it. That's it. Go get it. I'm teaching you something new, something different in your life. I'm teaching you how to trust, how to confide, how to move forward. I'm teaching you that I'm leading the path. I'm letting you know that what you thought was secure, you had, like in your back pocket, that's not what you need. You need what is in your heart to move forward, determine, understanding. There's not an issue so big that God can't take care of that you just come before him. You just have the faith and to believe with all your heart that that which has attacked your life, your mindset, your ideals, maybe even your goals have been totally demolished. They weren't demolished. You're just going to a new dimension, to something different. You just need to quit being a quitter, begin a doer. A follower of Jesus Christ. To be strong from within and understand there's not an issue that I'm facing today that God cannot handle. As we pray for the ones that surround us, and we all have family members and friends that need a touch of God. They need a miracle of God. And in some cases, they think like, how's that one passed? I said, that one is not that one, that one. That one is totally, totally lost. Never give up hope. As long as there's God, there's faith, there's power, there's the blood of Jesus to bring us forward. To be able to understand that as we go forward and we walk around our Christian walk, we hold the key to our blessing. We have the opportunity to be blessed, to prosper, that the fulfillment of Psalm number one would come to pass. When the Lord talked about the believer, says, Blessed is the man, he does not sit with a scorn against all he can do. What is the things, bad things he walks away from? He says, And they shall be like trees planted by living waters that bear the fruit in due time and their uh, leaves do not wither. And everything they do is going to, is going to what? Are you prospering? Are you prospering? God is prospering. Peace of mind. Be at peace of God. And know that God's in control of all things. What are you today? He said, I asked you. I asked you to take the steps of obedience. To humble your souls. I ask you to pray and seek my face. Ask for forgiveness. You've done this. All of us. If any of this you haven't done, then it's time to do it. It's time to go and reflect, take inventory, and whatever you haven't accomplished, get it done so God can do the ultimate for you. He wants you to be blessed. How many of you love your kids? How many want them to prosper? How many want your kids to prosper? Isn't that cool when they put a smile on your face? And you know, when they do something good, you just stand there like, yeah. I know I used to love to go to watch my boys first play and then my grandkids play and when they did something good it's a Nico, yeah yeah you let everybody know your kid when they messed up like i did you wouldn't see it <laughs> and i've told you this before about the difference between being a dad and being a grandpa as a dad i was very hard on my boys very hard in their playing ball after every game what's wrong with you i'm in front of you I mean, right in front of you. Come on, open your eyes. 
and yeah, Philly decided not to let me go down the end. Because when on their boys began playing ball, I'd go to their games, so the grandkids, and they would mess up as they get. So I do with them next time. Hey! Hey, I'm a grandpa now. I see things different. You know, I let things go. So I thank God that my God is not a grandpa. He's my father. Amen. And he lets nothing go. He still holds you to the highest grade. He still expects the best from you. And when something good happens in your life, when you do something good, he's so proud. He's so proud to say, man, that one was lost. That was a tremendous, had a foul mouth, had this, had that, had everything. And look at me now. Be blessed in the top of the Holy Spirit of God. Because the bottom line is this. Total surrender depends on you. You have to make that choice. You have to make that decision. That you want to be blessed. It's not that God doesn't want to. It's not that God doesn't care. It's that you don't pay the price. You haven't met that criteria that God wants for your life. And today that's what we need to do. Put ourselves in a position that God can place his hand upon our lives. I still love those old songs. Oh, there's a Spanish song in Roma, Spanish. This, pon tu mano, Señor, sobre mí. God, place your hand upon my life. And the greatest satisfaction you'll ever have is as you walk through a difficult times in life and it seems like there's no answer, then there comes a peace. Hallelujah. This surpasses all understanding. It's a feeling of satisfaction, of calming, and to know that God indeed is in control of all things. That's what you need to do. You need to go and fight and argue. No, no, you need to be at peace. You need to find your place. And instead of fighting God, why don't you serve Him? Instead of saying, God, why not? Say, God, let your will be done. It takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of faith. But it works. When God's will is being working in your life, you're going to be blessed. Nothing can take you down. Nothing will beat you. Nothing is bigger than the God that we serve people. And when we say, God is big, how many say God is big? How big is God? You tell me. You tell me. My God is awesome. My God is big. I started a challenge to me with this worship under the stars. And God is just praying blessings. I told Jake, after church, I got to see you. I have seven emails that I can give you. Seven different big people that are going to big across the nation that want to in on this to publicize it, to let to see their blessing to be. That's my God. And I share with people, I said, you know, my vision seems kind of dumb to some people. They feel like, really? Really? You really believe you to pull this thing off? Well, if I didn't believe it, I wouldn't be working at it. Because I know that God will honor my faith. And you will place people in my corner to back me up to get done what God called me to do. And I feel, I feel more than anybody else. It's coming. Something good is going to happen. Something good. And I've had other pastors ask me, Pastor, who helps you raise the money? In my church. That's what's doing. And God is sending blessings. God is with me. Don't give up. Don't give up. My God has the power to create all things. You don't think you can take care of your issues? And today, that's the God I want you to see. That's the God I want you to surrender to. Then instead of asking God why, tell God, thank you that I have you. And then tell him what you need. Speak to him. Why don't you tell him what you need? Tell him what you need. 
I'm hurt, I'm sad, I'm going to difficult times. This, whatever is sticking you down, put it at the foot of the cross and watch Jesus do his things. For those that believe, all things are possible. Say with me for all that believe, all things are possible. Say with me now. I believe. All things are possible. If you believe it, stand and talk to God. Tell him what the need is. Tell him that one issue, two issues, three, whatever it is, that is really turning you apart. There's creating such havoc in your life that is stealing your joy, your health. There's nothing too big for God. There's nothing so small he doesn't care. Or something so big he can't handle. He is God. He has all limitations. He has all power. And he's in your court. Make him Lord over your life. If need be, the first thing you do, ask him forgiveness. Clean the house. Clean the house. Stand and say, God, I'm sorry. I messed up. Forgive me. That's how simple it is. Now, once forgiveness comes, then ask me. Then ask me. Don't ask to see what's going to happen. Ask because something good is going to happen. Ask me. Embrace it, believe it, claim it in the name of Jesus Christ. And there's nothing, nothing bigger than the God we serve. Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus Christ, we stand in your presence, Lord, acknowledging your greatness, your love. Thank you for your patience, for your love and understanding. To give us direction, Lord, as we go to life. To help us understand the crisis in our lives. To let us know, God, that you're ready to meet our every need. We open that door today by saying to that if, yes, yes, I do accept the challenge. I will fulfill my end of the deal. I will correct my life. I will do the things God is asking me. That I might get to the then that will bring the blessing. Lord, I'm right at the door, ready to receive, wanting you, Lord, now closer than ever, your Holy Spirit to lead me to all truth, to give me strength, to be my companion, to open the windows of heaven and allow us to be blessed. And it's because you live that I can face tomorrow. Let my tomorrow be taken care of today as I come to you. And those things that have troubled me, and those things that have brought me down, that have brought discouragement, depression, sadness, I rebuke them in the precious name of Jesus Christ. That we might be delivered from all that anguish, might be at peace, and know that today is a day the Lord has made and I'm going to rejoice. I will use today as a springboard to move forward. The word of God as a premise, as a foundation to my victory because Jesus already paid the price. And as a son of God, all I have to do is clean what's mine. Heavenly Father, open the windows of heaven. Pour out your love. Be merciful. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your understanding. Thank you for being Lord over my life. And I know that what you promise, you will fulfill. And I need to understand. When I meet the conditions, then I tell you, I'll have to do wait upon your time where everything will be done according to your will and in your time. 
your dirty face. Calm the storm in my life. Let me be at peace. And we be strong, determined, and blessed. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. My life is in your hands. Total surrender. Because I'm loved. Thank you, Lord, because you didn't come to condemn me. You came to give me an opportunity. And I take that opportunity. And I run with it. In the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We are blessed. We are blessed. to God like you would speak to him. Have that team conference. It's like I would sit in my office and listen. God will listen to you. Speak, believe. Embrace. Release your faith. And let God do this thing. All in this time.